Mm-hmm. You go to, to Tennessee, correct? Absolutely. Are you a starter? No, not right away. Okay. Not right away. I became a starter. Yep. What was different about Tennessee? What opened your, your, your eyes? What opened your mindset to the world at that point that you hadn't seen in Atlanta? Man, um, I would say just the level of entrepreneurs, the relationships, and because of where I came up in Atlanta, I just didn't have access at the time. Like now that I live back in Atlanta, I'm introduced to a totally different side of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now that I went to college, did what I did, but at the time when I was coming up as a kid because of my circumstances and where I was, I just didn't have access. But once I got to the University of Tennessee, because you're a football player, you get access to certain things that other people probably don't. And so I had relationships with people that I probably wouldn't have had if I was a regular student because of the alumni and the network of being a collegiate football player. And the coach, man, like Coach Philip Fulmer. Like the reason I went to Tennessee was because like I'm a loyal guy. Mm -hmm. And my whole life, everybody that ever helped me, I never wanted to let him down. And so in him, I found that again, right? When he recruited me, he said to me like, I believe in you. When a lot of coaches was like, man, you got, you got some grades that you got to get. Like, I don't know if you might have to go to military school or not, Hargrave, or, you know, you got to go to Georgia Military Academy, spend a year there, then come to school. Coach Fulmer is like, I believe in you. He said, I know you're going to do what you got to do. I know you're going to handle your business. And so I kind of dealt with people based on how they dealt with adversity and opposition. And when I got to Tennessee, I was dealing with a coach that I felt like he handled problems well. And so that was a guy that I can confide in, a guy that I could trust. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I got to go backwards a little bit. Oh, no doubt. You're growing up in the house, 14 people. Mm -hmm. Gotta believe you never slept in in the bed by yourself. (laughs) What was that experience like going to college? (laughs) Yeah, man. Finally get that bed to yourself. Oh, no doubt, man. It was (laughs) sweet, man. It was sweet because, like, even when I was a kid, like, it was like a rotation that we might get every once in a while to be in the bed, right? And when we got that rotation, it was six of us, right? Three at the foot, three at the head. (laughs) And so most of the time, it wasn't even worth it. Like, cats got the foot on your face. Like, it's like, man, whatever. And when I got to college, I'll never forget, man, they – they had me in a room with my own bed, and it was a king side. And some cats came up, and they was like, hey, Ink, we're going to hit the sorority party. And I was like, I'm good, right? And they was like, man, what you, like, you got to hit the party. And I was like, bro, I got a, a room with my own bed. I was like, I got a king size bed, bro. Like, bump that party. And the cats looked at me, and they was like, you ain't got a bed at home? I was like, no. It was like, bro, you really don't got a bed? I was like, no, man. I used to sleep on the floor. And I stayed in there, man. I had my own little suite. Like, I was, I was on cloud nine, bro. It meant the world to me. And I got up that next day and cats was tripped out about it. Like, they couldn't believe it. Nah, people don't understand, like, something as simple as a bed it's that, that most people take for granted. Absolutely. There are people living in this world that would get a right arm to just have one good night's sleep, Doubt. like, so when I'm listening to your story, it brings me back to, you know, so many people I've grown up with, even my family, just, just having that bed and what it meant to you. Mm. You get to college. Are you now serious, not just about sports, but about education? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because I was, I was the first one in my family. And so um, it was almost like the sacrifices my mom made, um, my grandma my coaches, like, it was like all of them putting me in that position with their investments, and I had to give them a return on that investment. And so I was the first one in my family, and I told my mom and my grandma when I left to go, I said, I'm going to graduate. Like, I'm going to break that generational curse. I'm going to be the first one not only to go, I'm going to finish, right? And we had all the resources possible for us to finish. And so I was serious about not only the game, I was serious about my education as well because I felt – I could do something in my family that hadn't been done. Beautiful, beautiful. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. We spoke about it earlier. You said in your freshman year, you went and met with the chaplain. 
And that's where you really was introduced to the Bible and to faith, just really, not introduced to faith, but where it really enhanced in your life. Can you talk to me about that? Absolutely. And so um, he asked me, could I meet with him in his office? Why? why? Like, like, what was it about you? Yeah, yeah. I was talking trash during the <laughs> scrimmage, you know? Like, I was talking a lot of trash our first scrimmage. I'm talking crazy, right? And after the scrimmage, he was like, man, you wild. Like, you're a wild boy, man. And he was like, come meet me in my office tomorrow. I was like, all right, cool. And I met him, and he was like, I want to disciple you. And I was like, man, what's that? I was like, that sounds hard, man. What's that? <laughs> He's like, I want to walk with you spiritually. He's like, the same way you're going to study your playbook. He's like, I want to give you assignments to study in the Bible. He's like, if you got 8 o'clock workout, I want to meet with you at 6.30. You know, if you got meetings at 6, I want to meet with you at 5. I was like, cool, can I go talk to my roommates so I can have some accountability? And he was like, yeah. And I went and talked to him. I was like, hey, man, the chaplain talked to me about discipleship. Would y'all be open to walking with me on this thing? We could just hold each other accountable. And it was like, no doubt. And we went back to him and like the first meeting we tested him. You know, he gave us an assignment and we didn't do it. And we showed up to his office and he was like, y'all got it. And we started giving him excuses. Like, ah, oh, man, we had meetings, we had workouts. He was like, get out. And he was like, man, come on, man. He was like, no, get out. He was like, get out. Y'all don't want to take it serious. Get out. And he said, the next meeting is on such and such. Have the work done. And when we came back, and that day moving forward, every assignment he ever gave us, man, we took it serious. Every challenge, we took it serious. But he was a real cat, you know, like he wasn't this cat that was like super preachy. He mm -hmm. made us understand the journey. He made us understand grace. He made us understand we was going to fall short. He made us understand that it was a lifelong journey, most importantly. Wow, Inc. You're a freshman at this time. Now, now these roommates, did they play football too? Absolutely, yeah. So What's you found mean? three other people playing football yep. as freshmen when everybody is running around. It's your first time living on your own. It's nothing but girls on the campus. It's yep. parties, it's drinking, it's this, it's that. And you telling me, not just you, but you found three other jocks to yeah, say, man. we want to go and learn about the Bible in our freshman year? Yeah, man, yeah. Because this is a blessing, too, like, Whereas like all of us came from similar environments, just in different states. And so you had Robert Ayers that was from Jersey City, New Jersey, right? Got kicked out of high school, sent to South Carolina, ended up getting drafted first round, 18 pick to the Broncos. You had Gerard Mayo from Bad News, Virginia. You know what I'm saying? You had Ramon Foster, he was from a farm in Tennessee. But all of us was from the same type of background to where you know how most cats get to college, that's their first taste of like freedom. And so they wild Absolutely. out and they haven't seen anything. Most of us came from inner city. And so we had saw it all, tasted it all, been a part of it all. And so by the time we got to college, it was like, man, we trying to, we trying to do what we got to do, graduate and get to the league so we can help our families. And that was a blessing that I got connected with those cats because they was just as serious about it as I was. How laser focused were you on getting to the league at this point? Because I know you started playing when you were around seven years old. Yeah. Just for the audience sake who doesn't know your story, mm -hmm. what, is the, what is your mindset like from seven years old and you're finally in college where you know if I do well, I can actually live my dream? It was everything, you know, because, like, man, when I was a kid, I missed meals. You know what I'm saying? So... It was everything to me. Like, I wasn't about to play my opportunity away. Like, I remember mornings when me and my young cousins would go to breakfast. And, like, as soon as they would see the cafeteria, they would sprint to the front of the line, and the cafeteria administrator would put us on the wall and start yelling at us and be like, hey, Ink, you the oldest. Like, why you let them do this? And I was too embarrassed to tell them, like, man, we didn't eat the night before. Like, all my little cousins, they just hungry, right? We had breakfast. They just trying to rush to the front of the line and get something to eat. You thinking they just trying to break line, but I was too embarrassed to tell him until one morning he put us on the wall. He was like, Ink, you the oldest. Why do you let them do this? And I was like, bro, we didn't eat last night. And he was like, why didn't you say something? And I was like, you never asked. I was like, you just grilled us. You know what I'm saying? Like every morning you just jumped on us. And so when I got to college, 
Like all that was riding on it. Like my mother working a double shift. Like my family in that two bedroom home, they were still there. You know what I'm saying? My cousins were still sleeping on the floor when I got to college. And so it meant everything to me. Most cats weren't coming from that. And so for me, man, I thought about every meal I ever missed. And I never wanted to miss another one. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.